scripture into uh, what we talked about last Sunday, the word of the Lord for our church. And maybe you're new in church and maybe you're wondering what is this all about. Every year we pray and uh, we seek the Lord for God's word for our church. Uh, it's been on point for the last three years, to be honest, when we started doing this. Yeah. Last, especially last year, you know, when the word was foundation, building our lives on the right foundation so it will not be shaken. Mm. Actually, there's a great song also that we've been yes. singing. I got oh reminded of that for the last two days. Yeah. I will build my life, you know. Yeah. And I'm, I don't want to sing anymore, so. But <laughs> no, boy, her voice, her voice is just, as you could see. So deep so and deep, raspy. Tired. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. But yet, um, today, you know, and last Sunday, I talked about this. And I want to dive a little bit more deeper on this. But the word is actually growth. Mm -hmm. You know, specifically uh, growth. If you're believing God, I believe that God is, uh, wants us to grow. Mm -hmm. Spiritually, God wants us to grow. Uh, personally, mm -hmm. when it talks about a spiritual walk with the Lord, personal, God wants us to grow not only in that, but also on our uh, family, spiritual mm -hmm. growth in our family, also in our church. And um, and it's quite interesting because the word that I shared, it's quite a little, hmm, people are, last Sunday, it's not kind of like, uh, for some, they felt like, whoa, what, whoa, whoa what, what's this all about? Yeah. So, uh -huh. but um I think I want to elaborate more. Yes. I just laid down the foundation last Sunday, and I think it's very important for us to <coughs> just to, you know, go through this a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And again, the whole purpose was to for us to understand, really. Mm -hmm. And um, and the text is, of course, John chapter 12, verses 23 to 26. And it is very clear what we're talking about here, actually, when we read the text. And I want to say this straight, that this is all about, of course, Jesus, the parable of the wheat actually the grain of wheat is about Jesus dying on the cross and I believe this like what I explained Sunday that this is also Jesus not only speaking to the Greeks who approached him but also telling them really what it means because they said to Jesus Lord uh, we wanted to see Jesus in a sense they wanted to know more about Jesus yeah. but yet interesting the answer of Jesus is this and you know that you must die <laughs> you know and also that you might you must hate the world so that to you know to tell everyone that you love me and also that you must follow me and serve me. Mm -hmm. So when you hear that, it's quite interesting because what is this all about? Mm -hmm. Okay. But yet, let me just start by saying this. You know, if you want growth, if you want you know a growth, and we're going to talk about harvest, we're going to talk about fruitfulness, we're going to talk about all of those. I believe it starts with this. But before that, let me, let me, let's open our Bible in verse 23. Let me put that on the screen for us to understand what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Jesus replied, remember the Greeks approach him or the Gentiles and they wanted to know more about Jesus. And here's what happened. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Interesting because you have to understand it's the crescendo of what was going on here. Because so many times when you read the Bible, you would see, say, you would read you know, in John chapter 2, verse 4, John chapter 7, verse 6, Jesus would say this, it is not yet my time. Mm -hmm. It is not yet my time to do this. It is not yet my time to accomplish this. But yet, in here, it changes. The hour has come. The time has come. You see that the crescendo of this, uh, what I'm saying about the crescendo is, you know, when you're doing the music, in, the, um, the climax. So from the, the, my time has not yet come to, now this is the time. Mm -hmm. And what is this? In the crescendo is the climax is that the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Interesting. Because again, when you talk about glorified, that means to be magnified. That means to be known, in a sense. Glorified, in a sense, there's a lot of facets on that. But to be glorified. And everybody wants that. I think in the, in the culture, people want it to be known. People want it to be, you know, but yet the, the path to glorification if I may say it that way, is verse 24. And what is that? Let's put that on the screen. Here's what he said. I tell you the truth, unless the kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Mm -hmm. So the path to glorification, the crescendo, the climax, while Jesus was saying, my time has not yet come, now that my time has come, was for me to what? Like a seed to fall to the ground and die for it to bear fruit. And then he shifts. Let's continue reading. The man who loves his life, now talking about himself, now he shifts. It seems like he's explaining what verse 23 is. And what is that? 
A man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Mm -hmm. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Let's go back to that text in verse 24. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. Mm -hmm. So what is Jesus saying here? Let me just put this on the screen for us to understand. You want growth. You want fruitfulness. You want harvest. Jesus was saying, this is the path. This is the way. He's showing his disciples and also speaking to the Gentiles that this is the path to glorification. This is the path for you to be able to achieve this. And what is that? The seed must die in order to become what it was always meant to be. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. The seed must die in order to become what it was always meant to be. Mm -hmm. So, again, he's talking about Jesus. What is always meant to be was to die for our sin. To redeem us. Mm -hmm. That's always been why he came. We just celebrated Christmas. You know, the gifts of Christmas is what? We talked about, if you still could remember. The gifts of Christmas. Redemption. <laughs> okay. Wow. Salvation. Okay. All right. Uh, oh my gosh. Redemption, salvation, mercy. Mercy. Okay. And purpose. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for the live audience <laughs> to help you with that. Yes. I was like, okay. <laughs> I got, I got caught off guard. <laughs> Amen. In all of that, Jesus was saying that the original purpose was for me to be able to fall to the ground. ground. That means for me to die, to be resurrected, for this to happen. Mm -hmm. But yet now reflecting on ourselves, the seed must die. So you have to understand seed, a wheat, a kernel, just one. Mm -hmm. It has to die <coughs> to become what it was meant to be. So that means mm -hmm. even for us, and I'm gonna Water. get a little you need water. Mm -hmm. You need a candy. And candy, yes. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Pause for a bit. <laughs> and that means when you look at your life now, reflecting if this is for us, you need to understand this. So that means there is a destiny, there is a deposit, there is a plan to each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. And for that to be accomplished, like Jesus' example. We must die. Mm. And I think last Sunday, that was very hard to swallow. Yeah. It wasn't your typical uh, <laughs> New Year's it's message. It's not like, Happy New Year! Because and then after that, you're going to die. <laughs> Everybody was greeting, oh, Happy New Year! A blessed New Year to everyone! And then the message was like, uh, You, you, know, you have to die. die. Right? <laughs> and everybody was like, mm. If you want growth, and I like that question that you asked. Mm -hmm. um, oh, maybe here you want to have to grow, to grow in your walk with God. Everybody was, yeah, how many of you want to die? Mm. But because, it's the same thing. Yeah, but that's it's the same. same. That's what I'm saying. It's the same. Because if you want fruitfulness, if you want harvest, the path is for us to die. Mm -hmm. In a sense, this is what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. In order to live, uh -huh. you, you must, must die. die. What a great paradox. Let me say that again. In, in order, order to, to live, live, we must yeah. die. Mm -hmm. Because what he was saying, for order for that seed to reach its full potential, mm. it must die. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Because again, when you listen to what the world, it's quite, Jesus always tells the truth and it's always different from the what the world says. Mm. In this world, if you want to live, you have to just be yourself. Mm -hmm. Pursue everything by yourself. Mm -hmm. Accomplish things and live the full life that you have by yourself mm -hmm. for what this world offers. But yet for Jesus, it's different. In order to live, we must die. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what I'm saying last Sunday is the same. You must die in order to grow. Mm -hmm. So if you want to live the life that God has for you, you must die. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a sobering thought because normally in a New Year message, you know, we all want positive things, mm -hmm. you know, uh, hear good news, you know, just ringing in the New Year. You want to be able to receive good good things all the time, like go, hear nice words, you know, for what the twenty twenty three is about to bring. But you know what 
I really un- took from that message about growth and about, you know, 2023 this year for the church is uh, we God is ready to bring growth. Yes. He, he wants us to grow. That yes. is God's heart for us. But we could it could just remain a potential of growth yes if we don't die exactly. just like a seed that doesn't go under the ground Which is, and die it has all the potential it has all the potential <laughs> but it will never bear fruit it will never grow unless it dies okay yes. so let me ask you this let's do this i want you to pause and think about this i mean all of us if you're a believer if you're watching you know that god deposit potential just like what you're saying right so what are those? I think at the start of the year, you're thinking, Lord, here are the things that I want to do for you. Mm-hmm. I hope you did that, you know, at the start of the year. <laughs> you know, like, God, I want to do this for you. Lord, this. What actually you're saying, those are potentials. Mm-hmm. I want to grow in my walk with you. Mm-hmm. I want my marriage to, you know, mm-hmm. to glorify you. I want to go deeper in my walk with you. Those are all potentials, actually. Right. Uh-huh. Just like what you've said. Right. We have all the potentials because God dropped that in our heart. But the path to get there? That's normally we don't want to take. That's what we don't want to take. Mm-hmm. So sometimes what happens is that people just get stuck with the potential. Mm-hmm. That's all. So that's why at the end of the year, you live with regrets. Is because the things that God deposited in your heart as potentials, you would, you'd never achieve that. That's why it's regret after regret. Mm-hmm. I think God wants to take us out of there yeah. from the point of regret to a point of fruitfulness to a point of growth mm-hmm. and to what God already planted in our hearts. And mm-hmm. some of us who are watching here today and also my studio audience <laughs> <laughs> is that I believe that it's about time for us in 2023 to go back to what God had spoken to us mm-hmm. in the past mm-hmm. and also at the end of the year and to ask ourselves, are we willing to really live up to that potential mm-hmm. instead of just another disappointment? Mm-hmm. Come to think of it, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes the greatest hindrance to us receiving that, you know, answered prayer. I'm sure you've had your faith goals. You write it down, and sometimes you look at it, and sometimes you think, "Oh Lord, God did not come through for me." But have you ever paused and thought, "Okay, is it possible that I was not able to receive?" This answer to the prayer because I did not step out in faith and do what God yeah. is asking me to do, which is to die. To die. <laughs> yeah. And now I know that word "die." Do I? It's like whoa, <laughs> die, die, right? <laughs> so sorry, I'm Filipino. So, so <laughs> die is so morbid for some. Yeah. It's so difficult. Let's break it down. Mm. And I think he broke it down mm-hmm. in these two verses. Mm-hmm. Very simple. Still connecting to what I talked about last Sunday, but I think this is more simpler. Mm-hmm. And here's the the first. What does it mean? What does it mean to die? Mm-hmm. All right, to reach your full potential. Here's the first one. To die means to displace self from the throne of our hearts and enthrone Jesus. Mm-hmm. What a profound, but it's just simple. Dethrone yourself and let Jesus sit at the throne of your hearts. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. Displace. Displace self mm-hmm. from the throne of our hearts to enthrone Jesus. Where is that pastor? Let's read for 25. Mm-hmm. The man who loves his life. That's the key word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's you. You love your life. Right. Sometimes we love our life so much mm-hmm. that we don't love Jesus enough. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's the self-seating. Actually, what was being discussed here, Jesus was saying, the man who loves his life will lose it. If the self is the center, you will lose it. Mm -hmm. So he was saying, displace that self, his life, what I want, what I need, what? It's all about us, us, us. But look at that. While the man who hates his life, Mm -hmm. so the reverse, the dichotomy, actually, meaning you hate your life, that means no longer you is there. Putting Jesus there will actually keep it. Mm -hmm. Interesting, isn't it? The question is this. What do we love or who do we love the most? Mm -hmm. Either ourself. We don't say it, of course. I mean, even me. I don't announce it that I love myself. Come on. Come on. It's just, oh, but yet my action would say that. 
Actually, in our marriage, sometimes I would love myself more than you, to be honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> violent Exhibit reaction. A. Exhibit A. <laughs> Exhibit A. Uh, or sometimes you would love yourself more than me. Mm -hmm. And here's what I realize in our marriage. Then when Robert is enthroned, myself, mm -hmm. usually it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Because <clears throat> even if Jesus is enthroned in your heart and mine is Robert, there's always going to be that tension. Mm -hmm. at the end of the day who's always going to be sitting on the throne it's supposed to be Jesus mm -hmm. but Jesus was saying in this world that's the thing we love ourselves more than God mm -hmm. more than anything come on let's not talk about you or the things that we're pursuing just us mm -hmm. because sometimes we look at oh I'm like this is because of other people no no I'm like this is because I love me sometimes more than God mm -hmm. my anger my pride my you know Things that makes you crazy <laughs> because it's me. I'm still in throne. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that when we accepted the Lord, he's supposed to be in throne, but sometimes the Robert still creeps in and wants to sit at the throne. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because we pray, Lord, be my Lord, but yet be my Lord, but it's just convenient. Yeah. yeah. Because mm -hmm. it says here, the man who loves his life will lose him. Mm -hmm. Look at the dichotomy, love and hate. Mm -hmm. A man who hates his life. So, either you love your life more than Jesus, or you hate yourself for you to be able to love God. Mm -hmm. Do I hate my life enough? In a sense, not in a negative, you know, this is just a word, play of words, but do I hate my life enough? Or do I love Jesus enough to reflect that I hate my life more? I like the what you said before in the message when you said um, our love for God must be so that um, all other loves appear to be hate. Yes, exactly. Because you love God so much. Not that, you know, you you want to die exactly. because I don't like my mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. you know, like you're suicidal or anything like that. Not like that. But it's more, it's a question of affection, like who who is... Who do you love mm -hmm. like, the most? Who do you love the most? Yes. And I think this is very important, isn't it? So to die means display self. Yeah. That's it. Because. Because. The example is <laughs> the man who loves his life. If I love me more, then I'm still sitting at the throne of my heart. Right. But if I love Jesus, the reality is then I would obey. Mm -hmm. So the times that I don't obey, the reality is I love me more than God. Mm. Yeah. I love my choices I love my decision I love my situation mm -hmm. more than God that's the reality mm -hmm. I'm just giving myself as an example and I think look at your life I mean if you're watching here today you think about this the decisions that you've made in life to follow him and really to give up things is because you've decided you love God more than your life but on things that we cannot surrender to God that means we love our life more than that mm -hmm. more than God yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what? There was this thought that entered my mind. Mm -hmm. It was one of those things when I asked God, Lord, how do I know that I love you? You know, because you know, as a Christian, you, you do stuff every day. You, you know, you do your Christian things. Mm -hmm. you do. <laughs> but then you, you ask yourself, Lord, do I really love you? Mm -hmm. Like, do I really, really, really love you? Um, and, you know, there was one one thing that happened. The candy for, break for, for one of our studio audience. Studio audience. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so I was I was put God I think purposely put me in a position where I had to do something that was against what I felt I wanted yeah. to do. But when I finally obeyed, and I remember it was a Sunday service. I, I, I obeyed that morning and during Sunday service, I heard God speak to me that now you know yeah. that you love me more because it is never on those good moments where there's, you can easily choose God. Exactly. <laughs> it's in the moments That's not where, usually a good indication that we really love God. Yes. The only way you'll know if you truly, truly, truly love God is when you come face to face 
with something that you you love dearly dearly something yes. you feel you want to do that goes against what God is asking you to do and yet you choose to die and you choose God That's then you is. know I love God you so love you God want more to live you must die yes. the first step is dethrone self enthrone mm -hmm. God yes. here's the second mm -hmm. To die means to let go of what hinders us in order to be free to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, again, you go back to the text. Look at this. Whoever serves me must follow me. So, and where I am, my servant will also be. So, what's, what it means here is that, look at this. Serve me must follow me. What I'm saying is that we have to let go. Mm -hmm. We have to let go on what hinders us. Yeah. Letting go. Just like that famous, uh, you know, frozen song. Let it go, let it go. <laughs> so, I mean, you have to just think about that. That's what I was thinking about that. Of course, I got too much of let it go. So, when that song came up, but yet, there's so much spiritual truth in that. Just that word, let it go. Mm -hmm. Because for you to be able to follow, you have to let go. Because here's what people do. I want to follow Jesus, but I'm still going to hold on to this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, that's why they're having a difficulty following Jesus because they're dragging all of those things that they're still holding on. Mm -hmm. But it, here's this. According to him, what? You must serve me, you must follow me. Follow is the call of a rabbi to people who wanted to be discipled by a rabbi. Mm -hmm. In the time of Jesus, when a rabbi calls someone to be discipled, this, that's the word, follow me. Mm -hmm. So that's a rabbi word in the time of Jesus. When that is used a lot of Jew understood the context mm -hmm. because when they call follow me that means you're leaving everything to learn from this rabbi mm -hmm. so that means imagine what is the example that's why Jesus did that to the disciples what John Peter they were fishermen when Jesus called them follow me that means you have to live being a fisherman mm -hmm. to be able to learn from me yeah. So they cannot like, okay, I'm going to follow you, but I'm still going to fish. Imagine they're following Jesus. They're carrying the boat wherever Jesus go. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have a difficulty. So like, I'm going to follow you, Lord, but I'm going to carry this, you know, wherever. No, 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 no. At this point, it changes because you're going to learn. You're going to be with your master or rabbi. You're going to sleep where your rabbi sleeps. You're going to eat where you're, you know. And even that, Jesus says, but I'm going to make you fishers of men. Mm -hmm. He uses what they were doing. To give them a different spiritual perspective of these new things. Yeah. But no longer fishermen. Fishers of men. Right. Mm -hmm. So it changed. Just that letting go, that what hinders. That's why would, Jesus would say, really fo follow me. Then you have to let go. Sometimes he would say, you know, that you cannot love your family more than me. Yeah. He's not, he's, Jesus is not anti-family. Yeah. He's just saying more than the day, what hinders? Mm -hmm. What hinders? you from following the Lord. So that's why to die means to let go of what hinders in order to be free to follow God. But I think here's what happens to most Christians is that because we think, oh, God is so, you know, understanding and gracious, true. But we use that and says, and even if I carry this, I think God would understand. Again, then we fail what the scripture says. Because remember that rich young ruler? One thing you lack, one thing. Go sell everything that you own and follow me. What happened to him? He did not. He did not. Because he is not ready to die. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus, when he calls to follow, when he calls us to follow him, that means he's calling you to die. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he cannot. Because the mo money was what? Self was in throne. Money is still at the throne of his heart. That's why he cannot let go. Mm -hmm. So that's why he yeah. went away sad. But he has everything going for him. The potential of this man is tremendous. Rich, young, ruler. Mm -hmm. Potential, uh, tremendous potential, but nothing comes to fruition. Yeah. Because he was not willing to die. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Mm. So, the question is, what are you holding so tightly that you have to let go in order to follow Jesus? What are you holding tightly? What are you holding in your hands that, or in your situation that, Lord, I can't because this is only what I have. I remember... You know, giving my life to Jesus and, uh, you know, and even God asking me to forgive then my dad, um, which is by now, you know, my me and my dad, our relationship is restored. But 
the unforgiveness in my heart towards my dad was the most difficult part for me to let go. Mm -hmm. I, and God has to move. I was a Christian, but it took me two years to forgive my dad. Mm -hmm. I was a believer then, but God was keep on asking me, let go, let go, mm -hmm. let go, let go. And only did when I let go, which is I died, I saw the harvest and the fruitfulness. Mm -hmm. God restored my relationship mm -hmm. because I died. But if I could imagine if I didn't, I don't know where am I going to be right now. Mm -hmm. I might be a Christian still, but still with all of those bitterness, with all of those hatred, with all of those, mm -hmm. it's just going to seep in into my soul. It's going to affect my walk mm -hmm. and the people around me for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I, I think the greatest lie is what you're holding on to is better than what God is offering. Here you go. I love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's the greatest lie. That's why we couldn't let go. Yeah. But if we only see by faith, you know, number one, God's character, you know, who He is. God's goodness. God's goodness. God's Mercy, faithfulness. what we talked about. I know Ooh. every all the gifts all the gifts <laughs> that, that He has already sh us. showered upon us. Mm -hmm. Then you'll realize, you know, okay, even if I think this one is better, but because I know who my God is, then I can trust that wherever he's going to lead me is or take me is always going to be better than what I have ever imagined. And Amen. I think that's where we lack to see through the eyes of faith. That's Because as long as you think what you think you have, you have is better, better. Yeah. you're never going to let go. Exactly. So it's a lot easier when you think that what you're receiving is better to let go. Right? Like yeah. if there's a train. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, if you're the upper if I'm hand. holding iPhone 5, uh -huh. if it still exists, or 6, and then you're giving me iPhone 14, it's just so easy. Oh, really? Trade? Oh, let go. Let, let go. go. Sure. Let's order. Yeah. Because you know the value. Mm -hmm. But then I think if you don't know the value of what God gives, that's where the whole struggle comes in. Yeah. That's so true. God only promises is that He's going to be with you. Mm -hmm. Is that enough, though? Yeah. And plus the fact that. He is better than anything that this world can offer. Yeah, because I, get, I just wanted to say, mm -hmm. I mean, because a lot of people, they would say, okay, if God would do this to me, then I would let go. I think God, in His sovereignty, only promises Himself. Himself. He at is the end our of the day, because reward. Because yeah. at the end of the day, He is our reward. If He is not enough, then no amount of blessing that God gives to you will be enough. Yeah. You have to come to that place wherein you receive and understand that God is enough or more than enough. Until then, mm -hmm. you're not going to let go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's a major struggle for a lot of us. And it is always a journey, mm -hmm. right? Yes, it it's a journey. It's always a journey. It's a, a journey of letting go every day. It's a journey of, um, you know, dethroning yourself from this heart and choosing and making that decision to continue to die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's why... I think I'm going to end with this verse and then we're going to take the moment here. And that's why Paul, I think, for all the epistles that he wrote, understood this very clearly. And here's what he wrote. Mm -hmm. Philippians 1.21 For me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Mm. The book of Philippians, we studied the book of Philippians, of course. We went through this. And it's just so interesting because Paul, in his most difficult situation, he was in prison. He experienced how being stoned to death. Mm -hmm. He experienced how being, you know, uh, shipwrecked. He experienced a whole lot of things. And But yet at the end of the day, here's what happened. Here's, his declaration is, for me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. What he's saying is that living for Christ is a lot better. That the most challenging situation in your life because for him to live is Christ and to die is gain. That means Christ is living for Christ is what I live for now. Mm -hmm. This is what would define me. Mm -hmm. It's in a sense he's saying I'm willing to die for me for Christ to live in me. Yes. Interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Philippians 121. To live for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Mm -hmm. And dying is gain. What he's saying here is that the eternal value of really being in Christ is more than anything else mm -hmm. that he could think of. Yeah. All right. And I just want to welcome some few more audience coming in. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
is going on. We got Kat Kaliwag in the house. We have Carl. Lara Diano in the house. And also Sean. Usually our tech person that abandoned us. No, no, no. no. <laughs> She's attending the conference. The conference. I'm free. Okay. She's free. She's free. Yeah, it's so fun. Having exactly. a studio. I know. It's just a lot different. The laugh is real. It's not recorded. I know, correct. <laughs> so usually I'm like awkward because just the two of us or something, but it's quite interesting. It's nice. Yeah. It's nice to have a studio audience. But and, I love what you said in Philippians 121. Uh -huh. For me to live, to live is Christ, Christ and to die is gain. And I think if you look at this, Paul understood what Jesus was saying. Mm -hmm. A kernel of the what? A kernel of wheat the kernel must die in order for us to be able to produce the harvest that is needed. Mm -hmm. Paul understood. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, again, to die means what? Enthroning, dethroning yeah. self to enthrone Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. And to die means Let what? Go. Letting go of what hinders us to freely follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because that's what he said. Mm -hmm. We can't. We can't carry all of these things that hinders us and says, oh, I'm a follower of Jesus, but yet, you are enthroned. You still make a decision. You're still about you. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, I have to say, I like what um, um, Kev Ke Keys Kiesel said. Mm -hmm. Before we let go, we usually ask, what's in it for me? There we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, normally God doesn't say. <laughs> That's the wonderful Actually, thing. Actually, he said. Some yeah. No, he says. Me. What? Yes, yeah. exactly. It. Yeah. That's, That's all. Right. That's all he could promise himself. That's why yes. if Christ is not enough. enough, then no amount of blessing that God, God gives will not be enough. Yeah. So what's in it for me? But Kiesel is right. Usually, what's in it for me? That's why it's iPhone 6 yeah, to right. iPhone 14, yeah. it's a trade. We're making a trade with God. There's no trade. Yeah. That's yeah. why the, I'm trading my sorrow. <laughs> yeah. I'm trading my pain. <laughs> so, so new. <laughs> Very yes, story. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord. See, everybody knows. Oh my goodness. See, so my, our studio audience is flowing with me today. I can sense the presence of God. Mm -hmm. But yet, what's in it for me? Let me answer that. God, Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's all He offers. Yes, himself. himself. He actually already offered Himself. himself. And that's the question Is Jesus enough? enough? Because if not, then you're not going to be willing to die. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, another comment here. Yes, they um, are really commenting today. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Jane, Great. I'm going to read Mary Jane's comment. It's, she says here, it's difficult sometimes to let go because we can't see what the better thing is. But that's when faith kicks in. Yeah, when we believe that God has a bigger plan, even when we don't see the bigger picture right now. Yeah, then... Yeah. Yeah. Takes faith, let go. and that's mm -hmm. what was talked about actually this evening session. Yes, you know the the faith mm -hmm. for us to be able to trust God to mm -hmm. jump where I like the the impala, the impala, yeah, the impala illustration. illustration. That they jump like twelve to fourteen feet, but they cannot. They would enclose them to a five feet, five foot tall, five foot tall fence. fence because they can't jump if they not, don't know where they're gonna land. Yeah, mm -hmm. if they don't see where they're gonna land. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's read from Laika. Dying to self is good because dead has, has no, no capacity to disobey God. Mm -hmm. Dead people, for so I should. So I should remember not to pursue the dead, old self desires. Instead, follow the living God desires. Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. The dead self is the flesh that we pursue mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let me just ask some few audience uh -huh. here. So. <laughs> Uh, if there's anybody wants to comment yes. you know, while we're reading <laughs> the comment of people here. So what would that be? So mm -hmm. what's your comment on this? Mm -hmm. Anyone? Anyone? Uh -huh. The question is uh, talking about dying to self dying or to what's self. your take so far uh -huh. on this about yeah. dying to self and living for Christ. All right. Come on in. And dying means, you know, um, in dethroning self and enthroning Jesus, and dying means uh, letting, go. letting go so that we could freely follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, you can sit here. We, you can't be seen here in this uh, side. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> but if you want to see, see them, I am, 
I can do that too. Okay, let's go see them. Yeah. Let's switch the camera. I'm gonna do that. Let's go switch the camera here. Mm -hmm. So that you can see that while you're also thinking in the typing or writing, um, okay. we're gonna add my, hold on. Let's see, but they're thinking. So they're we're gonna still right read now. some few comments here. And like I says, go ENC, the live audience are on fire. Yeah. <laughs> and we could all be noisy because everybody is ENC, so. Yeah, yeah. 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 everybody yeah. Now, that's where yeah. We're not navigating a bit. Before when we do this, hello everyone. I know. Wake up to our we had... <laughs> Not today, we could Correct. be a little bit more louder. Yes, mm -hmm. okay, so. We go. See here. So, so far, so any comment from our live audience? Not for the people who just came in, but of course, we've been listening for quite some time. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Apple, any comment? Okay. So, I'm going to hold the camera while I. Apple, there, there you, you go. go. So hey, okay, let's sweep through the room first to see. Yay, okay, let's hey, go. Hey, our live studio audience Woo. right now in the hotel. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyone? Apple, you want to comment? Um, for me, um, to die requires something from us. Mm -hmm. It's an action word to this room, to, to let go. Uh, and, right. and, and those things are not easy to do. Yes. But that's the requirement in order for us to fulfill what God has for us to die. Mm -hmm. I don't want to die. Nobody wants to die. Wants I don't want to die, but I want the growth. But then, if I want the growth, then I need to die. Yes. Then only then, God's purpose will be fulfilled. Amen. That's right. Amen. Good. So there's so much love here on uh, from <laughs> seeing our live audience. Um, love emo uh, what's that? emoticons. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Emojis. Emojis. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else wants to share? Mm -hmm. Lara. Yes, Lara. Come yeah. out here a come bit, out, cause yeah. come out a little bit from, uh, from before I. Hold well on. All right, let's see here. Oh, that's the hot spot. That's that the is hot the hot spot. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, it's, fine. It's, fine. It's, fine. it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So all right. The cameras are so so Lara, Lara. Lara. Dying, dying to self. You know, it remembers. It reminds me of uh, the verse in Romans six four. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father we too might walk in newness of life. Mm -hmm. So if us not allowing ourselves to die, we don't bury it, and so we don't resurrect. Mm -hmm. And so for us to, if you want bread to be resurrected, if we want God to resurrect areas in our life, then we must die and bury it, so that we will be resurrected in Christ yeah. as well. Amen. 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 So Amen. biblical, that's so nice. Exactly. Wow. Okay. Wow. So let's some, read some comments here Ooh. from Pastor Tito. Watching from Manila, I love the next gen. Come on. Oh, I miss the old setup, but same spirit and passion. All right. <laughs> and also, Jane says, I uh, love that so much. Hey, guys. Um, I love this from Hannah. Hello, studio audience. Sky and Solomon got excited seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like I says, I don't know if there is absolute answer to this. I haven't forgotten the person who did wrong to me. Instead, I keep remembering, remembering to the you. point that I found that person most pitiable. I prayed for God's mercy on his life. Actually, when you talk about it, that's a good question. I think, do we forget? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Things that are difficult, things that have happened to us that are tragic, I don't think so. We will never forget. But I think the goal is God. When God asks us, He asks us to forgive, but mm. not to forget. Yes. When we forgive, I think it's letting go. Letting of go. The pain. pain. The pain. The, 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 the vengeance. The, vengeance the, the, the desire. The desire to get things. You know. Yeah. To hurt people. To uh, or to. Uh, to the let go of anger. Yes. I think that's what God yes. is asking. But to forget, no, I don't think so. Yeah. I still remember some of the things that people that have yeah. done to me said, mm -hmm. but yet the question is, does that Hinder, you. hinder me from pursuing what God wants. Mm -hmm. Or that controls me, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Let's ask one of the students here. Carl, mm -hmm. come on, another live audience. So there we go. Ooh. So yay. yay. So dying. So what do you, what's your comment so far? Um, well, just to 
from you guys about here. I'm still kind of new with the audience. It's fine, here, it's fine, but, it's fine. Um, but I love your shoes, though, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess to piggy off when it comes to just dying, it's like, as Christians, it's something that we resist because of our flesh, but we have to do. Mm. You know, um, it just reminds me of that statistic where it's like um, ten out of ten people die, right? And I just kind of see that in the <laughs> in the context yeah. of uh, what's it called, of Christianity, where it's like if you're truly meant to like follow God and sacrifice everything, then you you have to be willing to do that. Just like the early Christians that have done so in the past in Rome. Yeah. Or even that's still doing it in countries where um, Christianity isn't so celebrated. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like the, it, again, it's not something that I take lightly because I think everyone here knows the cost of a decision such as that. But we do see, I do see it as an absolute necessity when it comes to truly following God and laying everything down before mm-hmm. you actually follow Him. So, yeah, man. Yeah, that's that's great. That's good. 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 Great. All right. Mm-hmm. Let's read a few comments here from Jesse. It's one okay. of our studio audience. Who was <laughs> not the side comments? The side comments. Who was the side comments? A literal side comment. Avoiding the video. He doesn't want to talk to the video because he just made a side comment. <laughs> Dying to self is easier said than done. I believe that. We try doing it on our own strength, only through. Trusting the work of Jesus on the cross and submitting to the Lordship of Christ, only then dying to self can be achieved. Yeah. And I like that because at the end of the day, this is Jesus. Why is he saying this? Is because he's giving us an opportunity to see what it means to die. Because he is the first one who did it. Because he said, not my will, but your will be done. That's dying. Mm-hmm. So again, if God calls us to die, but yet he didn't give us the example to do so, I think it's going to be difficult. Right. That's why I believe it's not going to be easy, but we can do it is because Christ did it for us. Yes. He did it first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So because again, without his example, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why when you look at the life of Jesus, it's a life of what? Making a decision to die so that the purposes of God could live. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen.